Yo, in soccer we trust YouTube fan. It's been a few days, and I'll be honest, we missed you. So please hit like and subscribe to show us how much you've missed us as we talk about the 10 Americans playing in the Champions League and who they're going to be playing against. So let's get after it. Yes. What is up, everybody? Welcome to Desmond Armstrong's favorite podcast in soccer we trust. I'm Jimmy Trashcan Conrad alongside Hollywood Heath Pierce and Charlie Chuckwagon Davies. And now, before we discuss the 10 Americans competing in the Champions League this upcoming season, which... Fun fact is too short of the record. We actually had 12 Americans in last year's group stages. We have to let you know that because of your support, we've been nominated as a finalist for the best sports podcast. Yeah, that's right. Apparently we're a big deal, which is pretty cool. So if you voted for us, then look out for an email because we need you to vote for us again so we can flex on all those other podcasts. Help us flex, okay? Also, what else is pretty cool is that we have merch now. So if you want to take that next step in our host-listener relationship, then head over to store.cbssports.com and go grab some In Soccer We Trust t-shirts, mugs, hats, bags, water bottles, whatever you want. But make sure you use this podcast-exclusive code, Soccer20, for 20% off of your order. Anyway, Heath, I'm coming to you first. How are you doing? It feels like it's been a year since I was outside of Old Trafford yeah. with my trusty tripod, also known as a trash can. Well, yeah, it's a new life for you, Jimmy, uh, uh, with a new name, uh, Jimmy Trashcan Conrad. I, know. I like it. Cream it's cheese is stick. done. We, it's we hard to go back cream from cheese. cream cheese, which was also a great one. But I gotta say, Jimmy, for anybody that's watching this uh, uh, on, on on YouTube right now, and for those of you listening to, you can't see this. Charlie is doing his episode from the bathroom today. Um, he's got <laughs> that, that mid level. I saw some wicker in the background where I think you keep uh, some of that that uh, that TP. But uh, it's good to know that uh, even though Charlie's come after me a few times, um, he too is capable of doing still, it. Uh, still well. can't still can't touch Heath's bathroom. Apparently. No, Charlie. Listen, you know, just gotta this, own this it. Looks, you gotta I'm own in an attic. It. You're, I'm in no, an attic. yours looks like I'm a proper attic. bathroom. Um, how many floor? How many floors, Charlie? Before you get to your attic, is it three, I, four? What do we yeah, say? This one, this one's three. <laughs> yeah. This yeah. is three. Um, okay, okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm, I'm at count? the Cape. I'm at the Cape. You're Cape, the Cape. Cod. You know. What, uh, the, so the yacht's parked outside. I didn't know if it was your yacht or the, <laughs> yeah. the house. Uh, yeah. uh, so, so before we get into the Champions League stuff and the group stages, the draw just happened, and we can really dissect the groups and obviously the Americans playing in it. I've got some news for you guys. Mm -hmm. So. When I came over here to the UK, I obviously had a, a chance to go to Leeds and, and go see training with Jesse and go to the game last night against Barnley, Barnsley, excuse me, 3-1 win. Who and we can talk tickets? about that later. Jesse? Jesse gave me tickets. I sat next to, I was an honorary Marsh. I sat next to his okay. wife and, and kid. Oh, and I was, in the, I was in the director's box. Well, awesome. Charlie, we know we know no one's going to be critical of Jesse all season long. Yeah, <laughs> he just exactly. he just he just well, bought that. that uh, he just that bought that old uh, positivity, didn't he? I mean, he oh, was already boy. having his own positivity. The team's doing well. I don't have to add to it. But but something else popped up. Are you I at his become, house right now, though? I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. Okay. I'm in I'm in London now. But but uh, I've become friends with Coach Beard at Ted Lasso, and okay. he asked me to come onto the set, and I'm going to Ted Lasso's set tomorrow. How sick is no that? No That's yeah. awesome. That is yeah. wild, dude! Unbelievable. So I'm going to the set tomorrow. Flex of the day. <coughs> flex, flex, flex of the day, flex, flex, flex of the day baby. I'm multiple take flexes. It. Yeah, that was pretty cool, though. I'm I'm, I'm really excited, and uh, I'll obviously report back to you. But I might have to miss the podcast tomorrow. I know. Tears. Oh, are you bringing you don't want to pop can? in live? You don't want to pop in live? Maybe, maybe I should. I'll, let me let me let me get a feel for it and see if they're open to uh, to that. But that would okay. be pretty rad if I could okay. get a couple of them to jump on. Well, you know what? Maybe I'll find a trash can at the Ted Lasso set and I can. Oh, you have to pop us up. Yep. <laughs> so, so anyway, I just, uh, just thought that was pretty cool and I wanted to share and hopefully I can, uh, talk one of them into coming on the show at some point. That's really, that's really the end game here, everybody. All right. So let's talk about the Champions League group stages. We got 10 players that are playing in it. Uh, I wrote their names down because that's what I'm really good at. And I can't find that paper at this point. We can't let's go Cameron Carter Vickers. Okay, Celtic, they were in pot four, and they ended up getting a group with Real Madrid, RB Leipzig, and Shakhtar Donetsk. I think they're going to take care of Donetsk. I think they're going to finish in third, if you want my early prediction. Charlie, I'll come to you on this. But Madrid, obviously, reigning Jimmy, champions. Jimmy, Celtic are not good in Europe. They're not good in Europe. Not good in okay, Europe. Okay, but listen, we have Cameron Carter-Vickers with a chance to put Kareem Benzema in his back pocket, okay. and I'm here for it. Charlie, what do you think about Charlie's Celtic's chances of this? There he goes. Um, yeah, you know... It's a, it's a chance to beat really Leipzig, I think, for that second that second spot. So, I think really you think Celtic could get maybe second. I I do, but worst case scenario, you're in Europa League at third. Mm -hmm. I think they're better than Shakhtar. Oh, Shakhtar! Yeah, they're better than Shakhtar. I mean, Shakhtar may, may, Shakhtar is a a uh, uh, Champions League club. I mean, no, yes, no, but it's not the same Shakhtar as as before. Considering no, they lost the all their past. Brazilians. Yes, and, they, and they're playing their home games in Poland, uh, yes. in Warsaw. So, so they're not going to have any of them. It's not the same. So, 
But maybe they got those vibes, right? Everybody wants to play. I mean, they took it to Real Madrid at the Alfredo Di Stefano Stadium. Remember when they were rebuilding? <laughs> yeah, they, they won three two. <laughs> yeah, they did. They did. So, so Heath, you're the same. You don't think, or you don't think Celtic are going to get honestly. Top when three. I when I when I look at all of the groups, there is uh, RB Leipzig not the same as they were before. Um, Shakhtar's not the same as they were before. So there is truly an opportunity there. And and if you're Real Madrid, did I not could, just say that? I, I'm, I'm agreeing with you, Charlie. I can't Jesus. let you. I, I I'm I, I am agreeing with you on this. Okay. Uh, but um, now, now I disagree, Charlie. You know what? Celtics going out. You know they're going <laughs> they're straight games now. No, I, I I mean when you look at a lot of the groups that the Celtic do have a chance. And then if you're Real Madrid, you now look at that group and you go, we've got an opportunity to probably rotate through this and still get out on top. And rotation is all relative when you're Real Madrid, but uh, therefore there could be a point here or there to be taken off of Real Madrid as well. Through, through all right. if, if you're watching YouTube right now, the group stages are, are up so you can see them. But if you're just listening, we'll make sure we walk through all the groups for you. But let's focus on Cameron Carter Vickers right now. He's still a bubble player for me. I don't think anything has been uh, cemented in stone for, for him and, and his I think he's close to being on the roster, but this is going to give Greg Berhalter an incredible opportunity to see how he can perform against some of the world's best players. So when you look at Real Madrid, obviously he's going to now have to balance where Kareem Benzema is while also paying attention to Vinicius mm -hmm. Jr. coming off of his shoulder. It's going to be a great test for him. And the fact that he gets two match days against them, I think speaks a lot. Then we look at RB Leipzig. Timo Werner went back to RB Leipzig. That's going to be a different type of player that's got a lot of speed and a lot of pace. Maybe he doesn't finish all of his chances, but uh, these are going to be good quality test he will come to you first for Cameron Carter Vickers in particular yeah I mean it's uh, I feel like we've sort of hit this uh, already but um but we got names now that he's going to be facing which I think is important to to well it's it's, it's 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 again the hardest part when you're playing in in the the Scottish Premiership is that you're playing against smaller clubs all the time. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a huge challenge, right? Because every team throws everything at you. It's their biggest game of the year playing against uh, Celtic or Rangers for sure. But now we get to see him in a bigger stage, right? The speed of the game, exposed in certain areas, one-on-one -on -one defending. You act, we're going to get a sample size that we've all wanted from Cameron Carter Vickers because we haven't gotten a lot of national team games out of him. And, and I, I admittedly don't watch every time Celtic plays. So I think it's a real opportunity now for us to see how what his range is, what his upside is, uh, consistently through through a group stage. Okay, and then Charlie, are you worried about him at all? Because if he doesn't play well against these guys, then maybe that gives Greg some. No, I, I mean know, some well, fuel to be like, hey, we saw you against some of the best, and it just wasn't good enough. No, or do you I already mean, know what you're getting with him, and it doesn't matter? I I think it could only help him. He's playing Champions League, so as a defender, a, a U.S. center back you are playing the best competition you could possibly play. You're playing Real Madrid. Mm -hmm. that, that's mm -hmm. the top club, right? You're, you're, you're getting challenged at least two, two matches in that group stage. And then RB Leipzig is, is a, a different type of challenge, but it, it gives you a good look at to what tactics look like and if they do play a high line versus mm -hmm. dropping back. And so I think from that perspective, you, you get an idea of what his mobility is like. What What's his ceiling against the RP Leipzig? That's probably where you can really compare what he looks like against that type of competition. And then against the Shakhtar Donetsk, you fully expect Celtic to, to be highly uh, aggressive, mm -hmm. high line pressure, especially when they're playing at home. So I think in terms of, of seeing where his, his potential is and, and how he reacts, how he dictates the game, Outside of aerial duels, what's he like on the ball? Mm -hmm, what what mm -hmm, type of decisions mm -hmm. is he making mm -hmm. under pressure? Because, like you said, Heath, you're playing in the Scottish Premier League. Teams drop off. Teams sit back. They yeah, try again, and just keep it close. Right, right. You have time on the ball for the most part. In these matches, you don't have much time on the ball. So when you do get it, are you calm under pressure? Are you mm -hmm. are you able to to think? Are you able to make the right pass? If if your option one is closed down, how quick are you to find option two and three? So I think that that's why I'm going to be really interested to see how he reacts in a group like this. All right, we'll, well move on. Jimmy, from, go ahead. Go ahead. The last thing I want to say about that is, and it's also got to be thought within isolation, right? I don't think Celtic are necessary. I think they're probably an underdog. There's probably two underdogs in this, and that's Shakhtar and, and Celtic, I think. In the yeah. Group, when you look at RB Leipzig. But it's going to come down to a lot of his individual moments, right? Because we, we've seen teams fall apart. You see teams get broken down. It can't just be based on score that comes out of it. It's going to be a lot of those, like Charlie was just saying, individual moments in the air, on the ball, when he's pulled out of position in terms of his decision-making, those types of things. I think we're going to have to judge him 
And less so, I think, the results that Celtic put up while in this group stage. I just want to throw out there for some context that Celtic were in the Europa League last season, and they had Bayer Leverkusen. They lost 4-0 and 3-2. They had Real Betis. They won 3-2 and lost 4-3. And then have had Ferenc Farosh from Hungary. They won 2-0 and uh, won 3-2. He gave up 15 goals in those six games, only one clean sheet. So it's not like he hasn't faced something before. And, and so that's something to uh, keep in mind. And then they played Bodo Glimp, the, the, the sounds like a piece of Ikea furniture from But they probably felt them, they probably saw themselves as favorite in the Europa League versus 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 now they're going to it's going to probably be a, be a different type of like approach to getting points out of a group versus I, I just want to throw that out there because you I know, think there's, there's room for for improvement. All right, let's move over to the other Scottish team then because we have two Americans on Rangers, Malik Tillman and James Sands who both played very well in the second leg against PSV Eindhoven. Uh Malik did they had that little counter pressing, created the goal, which ultimately proved to be the difference. I think that's going to be, from what I understand, too, that's a, it's a loan to buy from Bayern Munich, and the loan or the, the buy price isn't I think like five, three to five million, which I think is hmm. pretty low for him. So something to keep in mind as he continues to have success with Rangers. But they are in a, I would say, pretty tough group. I don't know, it's not my group of death. I would say that Barcelona, Bayern, and Inter Milan and Victoria Pilsen are the group of death. But they're in Group A. So we got Liverpool, Napoli, Ajax, and Rangers. That is going to be an incredible experience, life experiences for these two players in particular. Uh, Heath, I'll come to you. <laughs> you never want to. You never want to. You never want to approach uh, that, Jimmy, with life experience. You know, uh, I, in terms I, of well, it is competing. We're like, you know what? They're going to learn a lot. In these <laughs> they games. are going to learn a lot. Uh, That's what a true. life. Wait, what a life experience for these guys as they go out fourth in the group, you know? Uh. Okay, that's kind of a dad thing for me to say. But I I, I do – I mean, to be able to play it, it and, be, Anfield – It is, it is I, a life experience. It, but I'm saying it is prefaced in the idea that, you know, uh, it's, it's probably not gonna go more well. of a life experience than, <laughs> than, yeah, than it is going to be like a footballing experience. But you never know. Those are qual- – they're, they're, they're two players that have, have, have risen recently um, – and getting more attention than, than they ever did before. James Sands, especially, as well as Malik Tillman, who's finally getting these first team minutes. So I think it is an opportunity for them. We we didn't know this about Brendan Aronson. We didn't know this about Tyler Adams. We didn't know this about any of these guys. Tyler Adams, big thing coming in that semifinal or the quarterfinal when he scored that deflection goal, rose him to another level. And I think mm-hmm. this stage provides him, them an opportunity to say, I'm not just a Rangers player uh, as one of the top teams in Scotland, but I am a Champions League quality player. Okay, so let's talk then, Charlie, about the 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 real possibility here for, for Tillman and Sands. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If they that's play well, Europa league. That's the, okay. That's you the think goal. they're finishing in third or yeah, you've got to try to see Ajax for me, like Liverpool, obviously probably top L- Liverpool Nap- and Napoli are, are one and probably two. top two. Yep. And then Ajax, yeah. I mean, they lost their manager. They lost Mazarawi, Gravenberg, they, they, Tal- they, Tagliafico. They might lose Ant- a couple more. Yeah. Anthony. Um, so, so yeah, they, they're a team in transition in a lot of different ways. So I do think that Rangers could potentially pip them for third. Still a lot mm-hmm. of work to do, but maybe that's what they should be aiming for realistically and hoping that maybe they can scrape. Because sometimes the athlete does falter in Europe. But let's just talk about Tillman and Sands in particular yes. because these guys really feel like they're on the bubble. Carter Vickers feels like a little bit closer into the you know the four center backs we're going to take because he does have some 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 tools that I think could be useful for us based on the matchup. But, but Sands is definitely on the outside looking in. And Tillman feels like he's – I don't know if he's competing with De La Torre, but he's in that space a little bit. And obviously with an expanded 26 man roster, if these guys play well, it's going to get to that point again, where it becomes undeniable. But the, I think these are the games that matter the most because of what you guys said before about the Scottish premiership, maybe not being challenged in the same way week in and week out. Well, for sure. I mean, this is a good sample size for Greg Berhalter against the top competition in Ajax and, and, and Napoli. And, and the Ajax has some really quality players too. I mean, if Anthony stays, this is a Brazilian international who will be going to the World Cup. So mm-hmm. I, I think in, t- in terms of James Sands, who we saw in the early stages of World Cup qualifying, if there's ever a player to come up in terms of a center back depth chart, mm-hmm. it would be him playing consistently for Rangers where – Gio Van Bronckhorst wants his center backs to, to, to be able to be flexible, get on the ball, be comfortable. He was, a, he was always a defender who, who, would, who was good and he could play as a midfielder. I think for Sands, if he could show well against Napoli and Liverpool, who have some of the most dynamic attackers in the world, that that's going to help his stock and is mm-hmm. going to push him up, up, up the, the totem pole in terms of center backs. Because let's be real. 
there's not one center back that we have that you could say, I can, I know what we're going to get from him every single time. And I'm, and I'm including Walker Zimmerman in that conversation because he's dropped off considerably in his form. Mm -hmm. And that's a major league soccer. Yes. But at the end of the day, there's not, there's not a, a Carlos Bogonegra or a Gucci and who's, who's, who, you know, that's your starting center back. That's mm -hmm. the rock. So I think for, for this group um, in particular, Rangers has tough competition in every single match. So you have six matches to show a whole lot and prove to Greg Berhalter that you can, you can come up in a world cup and, 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 and produce. So I love it. Um, yeah, I think, this is great for us. I yeah. love, I love well, this. But by the way, James Sands, my biggest worry of why I didn't think he was playing is because the game in Scotland is physical. It's fast. They're gonna. You got to compete, and he is a technical center back, right? That's mm -hmm, why he can play mm -hmm. in the midfield. He's good on the ball, and I worried like, does he have that ability like a Cameron Carter Vickers does to like scrap? And if he's getting these minutes now, and now in in the Champions League, going to get these crucial minutes that. Might change my mind, uh, as Charlie mentioned, of moving up these the depth chart or moving up the power rankings of our center backs as somebody that could be versatile and not just somebody that you know a good passing center back. Because again, you, we can go all we can talk all day about good passing center backs that aren't in our pool right now. No, well, of course, yeah, especially under pressure. I mean, there's yeah. a difference between good passing center back having time and space and a good passing center back having no time and space when you you are under the under the gun pressure, 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 and making the right decisions and and the right touches right. At, because I've seen center backs who, given time, you you might think they're Pirlo. But as soon, <laughs> as, soon as there's a, a real press from a that team. That was me. I think you're just trying to say me, but it's fine. Keep going. <laughs> that, that ball is out of bounds. That ball is, <laughs> that ball is being shot at someone's knee. Um, so, uh, it, like I said, in, in, in terms of the depth chart with 26 roster spots, the center back position is weak and the striker position is weak in this group. Left back outside of Anthony Robinson, really weak. So you're looking at who can come in, who can fill roles, who can, who's who's in form, who's playing consistently. Because at the end of the day, you want players, all 26 could play at some point. And right. you want to make sure that those players are in form, are being challenged, and can come in and, and make an impact. So if James Sands is, is doing it in Champions League, maybe Rangers isn't getting results, but he's playing well. And Malik Tillman is continuing to score goals. And those two are going to be on the roster. Yeah, they'll be on the roster. I agree with you. Now, speaking of the roster, I probably should have mentioned this a little bit earlier, but three hours ago, Henry Bushnell from Yahoo Sports tweeted that the U.S. men's National Team World Cup roster will be released on November 9th. Mm -hmm. So we have a firm date now. U.S. Soccer VP of Marketing, Kate Bradley, said at a board meeting that there will be an event in New York City at which Burhalter will announce the 26-man squad. And the team spokesman confirms that that will actually be the grand reveal. Now, a couple things about the November 9th reveal dates. The final deadline is November 14th. And many of the 26 players will have games a few days after the reveal for the U.S. on the weekend of November 12th. So That'll be the... The, I think that'll the, be the game the where all of them are like, I, I'm every, good. Every I'm not going to play. Every team who has World Cup players is just like, don't play me. And if you do play me, don't expect anything, any work rate out of me. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, exactly I'm avoiding right. all challenges Walk on that day. Touch, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Two touches, you oh, know, shout, out, shout out to Dwayne Gregory. I am with you. James Sands does not have pace. He is not fast. And that's why he can't play in the midfield. When people say, oh, James Fan Sands is a defensive midfielder. I'm like, in what world? He can't yeah, cover yeah, yeah. ground yeah, in yeah. the in the way that we play now. That defensive midfielder has to be able to cover ground yeah. and do it quickly. He he is not a factor in that position now. As a center back, yes, pace matters, but it's all about here as a center back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, do you mm -hmm. take the right positions, the right angles? Tactically, are you sound? That's how you neutralize speed is with with your brain. So if if he's doing that at Rangers and he's physical, like he talked about. You were a little soft sometimes. Now you're physical and you're smart. You, you have good feet as a center back, so you, you can excel. No, that's a, that's a good point about James Sands, when you, especially when you compare him to what Tyler Adams does in the same exact spot and no, how much ground. You can't. Well, you can't nope. because they're two different players, and what Tyler brings is exactly what we need, and, and obviously he's been proving that with leads as well. All right, let's move on to uh, our, one of our next players, Timothy Chandler, plays for Eintracht Frankfurt, who were in pot one, by the way. When I saw the pots, I was like, one of these things is not like the other. Eintracht are terrible uh, and uh, have yet to win uh, in the Bundesliga. Europa League champions, season. guys. Let's go. They won the Europa League. Tell I know. Him, Heath. Tell him, Heath. Anyway, he got into a group with Tottenham, Marseille, 
Sporting Club de Portugal and Eintracht Frankfurt. Honestly, he, he's not playing much in the league anyway. This could be where he gets his games because I, 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 I like you think on paper they, they could actually do well in this group. Uh, so maybe it's the flip and he's getting league games, but he's not he's not playing a ton more of a role player within the squad. Sure, sure. Uh, and, so this could lead just, to just more games for him. And it just doesn't even make sense to, to mention him because he's just he's not. I'm just he's, not he's one of the he's one of the he's one of the ten about. Americans of the Champions League. <laughs> I, I just want to show him some respect. All right, let's move on to Josh Cohen. Plays for a uh, uh, Maccabi Haifa, and uh, they they got into the Champions League group stages after beating Red Star Belgrade. After coming easy back. group too, easy group. That's what I like. Yeah, they're group. they're in a very very uh, tough group. They have PSG, Juve, and. L. Benfica, yeah. There's going to be well six L's. They're going to have the return matches yeah. as well. So let's move on then to and, and congratulations to him. He's 29 years old. So for him to get yeah. this chance, still the unbelievable League, experience, Jimmy. Right, Jimmy? It'll be a good life experience. Hey, it'll be a life experience. It'll be a good life experience. I love that. That's that's going to be my new uh, thing. Anytime I'm I'm calling an L for anybody, it's like All right, it'll that's be a great the next life team. Yeah. It's great. great <laughs> okay, let's stay in this group though because we got Weston McKinney and okay. he's taking on PSG and PSG has been excellent. Outside of a little bit of fr- friction between Mbappe and Neymar over a penalty and Messi, yeah, they have scored well, 17 goals, 17 goals, and only three against in the first three games, and they're cruising, absolutely mm-hmm. cruising, and uh, that's gonna be a good game. I'm curious to see if Weston McKinney will be involved in a meaningful way. I know Pogba is gonna probably be out. Well, he might be coming back towards the end of it, so he can be ready for France for the World Cup. So it'll be interesting to see where Pogba slots in. But this is a good group. I think uh, the group that I think Juventus can get out of Charlie because. PSG will be a tough test. Benfica you can't really sleep on Portuguese competition in, in Europe, but but I think Juve's got enough quality. I'd give them maybe a dark horse if they can get out of their group and then Federico Chiesa can come back in January and be a little bit more you know healthy and ready to go by February when the knockout rounds start. I wouldn't sleep on these guys, but under Maxi Allegri, they don't really play the beautiful game that beautifully. Yeah. Um, you know, I think Juve finishes too in this group. Okay. Um, I, I do think they they are ahead of Benfica. And PSG, for as much as the turmoil that they, they were in, I mean, did you watch the match versus Tim- Timothy Weah's team against Lille? They absolutely Seven blasted one. them. Yeah, yeah. And, and it seemed like winning heals all, right? So at the end of the day, this PSG team is focused on winning Champions League. When you have a, a, a roster like that, that – that's why they're always considered a failure, no matter how many trophies they win. If they don't win the Champions League, it's a failure. So it's going to be a tough test for Weston, but I like it. That Those are the kind of games you want to be be playing in. And again, he's going to be facing Lionel Messi and Mbappe and Neymar in 1v1 situations throughout the game. So for yeah, him, yeah. let's go, Weston. Step up. Yeah, I'm looking at the PSG they're playing a 3-4-2-1 under Galtier, and they got Sergio Ramos on one side, Marquinhos, Kimpembe is their back three. You got Hakimi and Nuno Mendes, who's excellent, by the way, on the on the wing backs, and then Vatini and Verratti. That's who started against Leon. They got Messi, Neymar, and Mbappe up top. Pretty narrow, and they're getting their width from their wing backs, but it's all those guys are blowing up. It took Messi a long time to get started and to get going last year. I don't think he was really settled, but he looks quite comfortable now. Uh, I'm excited for Weston McKinney. What, what do you have? Juve finishing Heath and, and then Charlie come back to you. Do you think PSG? Or, or who, I don't even know who you guys have winning the Champions League based on what you've seen so far or the group stages. Uh, yeah, I, I mean for me, all of PSG's current tensions and issues are going to come out in the Champions League, right? I think they're going to cruise through the group stages in terms of qualifying for the next round. But uh, we'll, we'll it's, find then out. Then it's who they uh, face in the knockout rounds. Yeah, and then yeah. I think that's where you could see the some of these ripples and implosions on the big stage because right now they're able to sort of live in the in in the shadows of of the global game because they're playing in a league that they dominate but for 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 juventus i think they're going to finish top two i think psg win the group juventus come out on on second and i think we continue to see the 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 growth of weston mckinney where he's going to get two games now against psg and he's he's again i know it's probably get sounding lazy at this point but he's a player that i think can be on the same field as a psg and 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 not look like uh like a standout in a negative sense you know what's interesting is that I think this through. I want to see a world where Pogba and McKinney are on the field at the same time. I just want to see what that looks like. I know they've got Zacharia and Locatelli and they've got other options, but it would be pretty cool to, to see that happen. All right, let's talk now about Barcelona. Serginho Dest, he hasn't sniffed the field for them yet, but he's still part of it. He's one of the 10 Americans, and we don't know where he's going to end up. There's a week left in the transfer window. 
But Barcelona, for me, have the group of death. They got Bayern Munich, who in the last three games against Barcelona beat them 3-0, 3-0 in that famous 8-2 game. Now Lewandowski's on the other team now, so we'll see if that changes anything. And then Inter Milan. That is an insane three teams. Mm-hmm. And only only two of them are going to make it to the knockout rounds with all due respect to Victoria Pilsen, who are going to be watching on the couch like the rest of us because uh, it's going to be a great life experience, I think, yeah, for Victoria Pilsen. They're, they're happy with that life experience. i tell you that right now. It's a celebration. <laughs> That's a, a celebration. Like that, you want to play – you. The, the hope yeah. is you challenge yourself, you get right. awesome competition. Right. There's no better group than having Bayern, Barca, and Inter. So, yeah, let's go. At a minimum, at a minimum you go and get a couple cool jerseys that you put on the wall. You know what I mean? That's exactly. That's, 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking six jerseys right off the bat. Yeah, yeah right off the bat. I'm like, yeah, this is, <laughs> is going to be tough, but Barca, man. Bayern, you know? yeah. Yeah. Go. Got to go Lewandowski, <laughs> like Chaku, <laughs> Sadio Mane. Oh man, I would definitely. Uh, be. It's all life's about the journey, Jimmy, not the it destination. Is, it you know is. I mean? It really is. It really <laughs> is. And then they're not even going to have the Europa League journey because they're not even going to finish in third. Uh, uh, uh. But uh, who do you guys like in this group? Who do you think are the top two to get out? Because we'll leave Serginho just out of this. I don't even know if he's going to finish with Barcelona when this this thing starts. I think he'll be on the move. I think um, Byron. I think Byron topped the group. Okay. And Barca Inter fight for two and three. Yeah. I mean, I, I if I had to put. I think Barca finished too. Okay, I, yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm with you on that. I, I, I'm, I'm with you. On, man, I'm just so interested to see uh, Lewandowski play against his former team. I mean, I know, Bayern was incredible. one. Every Bayern was another year I started where I was like, "There's no way they can keep this up." And then they've just battered everybody in the league. And and again, Champions League is very, very different. So they'll they'll have their challenges. And somehow they they pulled the old uh, the the old uh, swindle on on sending Nicolas Sule to to Dortmund, who now. Now I have to deal with him. And so they just continue to get better, but it never seems like, you know, like where is the Lewandowski replacement? And they're continuing to do just fine uh, in a new system with with playing more false nine type of, you know, kind of modernizing uh, their style of play. So it'll, it'll be fun. But I see Bayern going out on top. They're just too... Because they don't go after a big a big swing that could disrupt the team, they just continue to add little pieces that keep that sort of core unit together. Okay, let's move on now to... Club Bruga, which has Owen Odesodi, 21-year-old midfielder. He's only played in two games. One was the Belgian Super Cup, uh, 1-0 win over Ghent. And then uh, he played a couple weeks ago in a 1-1 draw against Zolta Varagem. That's my very best. Uh, That's very good. I can come with. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. W's or V's, everybody. So, so I don't know. I think we got to throw him in there because Club Bruga do have a tough – and maybe not that tough a group. They got Atletico, but I mean, compared to some others, Atletico Madrid, Porto, Bayern, Neverkusen. Because and Neverkusen are they, they suck right now too. By the way, like they do. I think they're I think they're on zero points. I, I'm not sure. No, Somebody I thought the they won their field. first. Maybe they yeah, won but one, but they they're they're the they're one. they're they're down towards the like they still don't have Florian Verts is still on his way back from from his his knee injury. They look like they were going to be good. I hadn't finishing kind of close to the top two in the league this year, but they don't look like they're in form right now. So um, it, I, I don't I, know if, if that's going to turn around. If I'm Bruga, I, I I at least am trying to push for third. Yeah, I'm 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 thinking about that third spot. Yeah, I think that Neverkusen will figure it out and maybe get in the Europa League. They have so yeah. much attacking talent, but I got Atletico first. I think Joao Felix is going to have a good season this year. I can feel it. And then Porto second because that's what Portuguese teams do. They always find their way into the knockout round somehow. Charlie, and then I got Leverkusen third and, and Jimmy Bruga Leverkusen fourth. zero for three in the league right now. Zero for three. Zero okay. points. These you guys know what? are on zero points. Zero points. Dejan Buchanan, Club Bruges. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> All right, yeah. So what do you, yeah, we can talk some Canadian internationals as well. But uh, what are you saying about this group, Charlie? I'm with, I'm with you, Jimmy. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, well good talk. I'm glad we had that talk. Well, let's talk. <laughs> yeah. Let's go to Gio Reyna then. Let's go to Borussia Dortmund. They got Manchester City in Group G, Sevilla and FC Copenhagen. Charlie, I'll come to you since you're Mr. Short Answer right now. Uh, now obviously, the big matchup is... Erling Holland coming back to face his former club. There's a couple of those. Lewandowski's mm-hmm. the other one. Di Maria going for Juve to play against PSG. What are you saying about Giorena and, and this group in particular? I think City obviously win the group, but then Dortmund Sevilla is kind of a coin flip for who gets second. Uh, Dortmund are not in good form right now. I mean, I was watching their match and I, I against Werder Bremen, and they're they were winning, and they gave up three goals. From the 89th minute on, they they I, I couldn't believe it. They're up two nil. You think yeah. the game's over, and Werder Bremen scored three goals uh, after the 89th minute. So, I think in this case, 
Dortmund are fighting uh, against Copenhagen for that Europa League spot. I don't think they even have a shot against uh, Sevilla um, and for sure not City. So, so, so at this point, I'm just I'm hoping Gio Reyna starts to get those quality matches here because let's be real. If Gio Reyna shines in Champions League for this in this group stage, yeah, we are talking about Gio Reyna back in the starting eleven for the U.S. Men's National Team. Now we're 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 trying to say where is that? Where does that is that in his t- typical right the right wing spot? Because right now Brendan Aronson probably has that penciled in. So I think that that's something to keep a close eye on. Okay. I agree yeah. with you on that. And and what I'll add is I want to see Gio Reyna at the Etihad oh, thanks, Trash, slicing man. and dicing. Uh, Charlie, Charlie that that continues way. to put five players that are right wing in the starting lineup for our national team. But I can't. <laughs> <you know. laughs> Tim- Timothy Weah, Brent Aronson, and Gio Reyna. Th- those are the three. Because we all know Yunus Musa and McKinney and Adams. For sure, Adams and McKinney aren't moving. And I think Yunus Musa is too good to take him off the pitch because he's so different than the others. Yeah. So now you're talking about three players for one position. Christian Pulisic is starting. Unless you do a false nine, and Greg Berhalter has not done a false nine he at hasn't. all. He won't. Since he won't. the very beginning. No, he so won't. we know there's only one spot available for three players. I do so. want to jump in and say really quickly about Sevilla. They lost Diego Carlos and Jules Kunde. When you lose your two starting center backs, I don't think that's easy to replace. So I think there is room for Dortmund to get in there. Sebastian Allaire obviously having his cancer scared. Hopefully he gets better soon. It looks like they caught it early. He was tremendous for Ajax, scoring a bunch of goals in the group stages. If he was available for Dortmund, I think we'd be probably saying that Dortmund could book their ticket. But Sevilla, Spanish teams also in this competition seem to do pretty hey, well. With, even though- ja- hey, Jackie D, stop with that. We, we don't do – we- don't come up with that. He's going to start yeah. Paul Ariola at right. right hey, come also, on Jimmy, yes. are you are you critical of Munchie that he can't replace his two center backs? One of the I'm, greatest, I mean, he went and like, got a set. Pe- no, you know? I, I, I'm a big fan of Munchie, but he, I mean, the, when the money's that good, they're going to sell the guys, of course. Yeah, of course. You know, but but he got a, a center back from, from Galatasaray, and he's going to be good. He'll be solid, of course. Munchie doesn't just go get chumps, but. But that's just it's just a really important part of the field. And I just think that's not going to be easy to replace. Maybe, what? maybe we'll see. Hey, quick fun fact on Munchie. One time we did an interview with him and he asked us to have the camera angle facing kind of like low to up so that he looked like a giant. Like that was the personality he would like the persona he was going for. I and it that. literally did it. It was like from the ground up and he looked like he was seven feet tall. That's like the the, the ego in him of just being like, look at me, I'm on top of the world. Just so you know that Munchie is the sporting director for Sevilla and considered one of the best sporting directors in in all of of Europe and, and he's done a great job with uh identifying talent that fit the systems of his teams and so a uh, shout out to to uh, Monchi. we'll see what they got for Sevilla go ahead before before we go any further in your in your opinion if Giorena is at his best and in form you have to start Aaron, him and over Aronson even if Aronson continues no you have to start both <laughs> okay. Hey, <laughs> this is why we should have been taking, like, trying some of these guys in another. Po- I mean, this is a. a I a, said that a we had four friendlies in June. Take why would we not try it just for and a try half? somebody on the other side? You know, I, let's play two said- right midfielders. I'm fine with. Would, that, would you know you, what I mean? So, yeah. So you would we know Robinson's Pulisic. bombing. Would, would you, uh, I mean, I wouldn't bench. I wouldn't bench him, but I would say at least we would know that. I would consider it. Uh, I mean, it's it's worth considering, but we don't. I, I haven't seen anybody else that can come into that spot and be comfortable with in the half turn from the right side coming in. I would think that that Brendan Aronson could do it. I know that Timo Weah can't do that. Well, Brendan uh, Aronson, even though he sure did bang against bang against uh, Jamaica on that left side, um, you know, uh, uh, Giorena could do that. But I want to see that from, from a rhythm standpoint because we know we're going to get that width from Robinson. Well, bringing up Christian Pulisic, I'm glad you did because we got one more American left, and that is the number 10 that wears, uh, well, I should say the number 10 for Chelsea. That was a tough one for me, everybody. Uh, In Group B, Chelsea is in with AC Milan, who are the Serie A champions, but they finished last in their group in the Champions League last year. You have RB Salzburg, who clearly aren't going to be as good without Brendan Aronson there. (laughs) And then then Dinamo Zagreb, who I always – as a Europa League team. So so I think Chelsea and Milan are going to go through. Salzburg and Zagreb will be battling it out for that third spot with all due respect to the Croatian club. Uh, Heath, I'll come to you first. Christian Pulisic needs to get minutes. I think he's going to get minutes either domestically or in this competition because they've got a lot of games. They're trying to stack all these Champions League games a lot quicker than usual because of the World Cup. And you just have to balance it. You have to play him at some point. And it looks <laughs> like they're not going to let him go. So, so... 
obviously a big, a big opportunity for him just to get minutes and to be sharp against some pretty good competition. Yeah, I, I could see him getting six games uh, in the Champions League when you all things considered. Maybe not the first bout against AC Milan, but you could certainly see when things shape up. Salzburg again, not only you know I know we make the joke about uh, Brendan Aronson, but Adiemi also also leaving Christensen. Like mm-hmm, they they've mm-hmm, lost mm-hmm. they've they've lost a lot, but. These clubs are are in the Champions League every year because of how they do within the league, but they're also because they're part of a system and they know who the next player is coming in when they're ready to to have another player sell on. So not like it's going to be a, a, a walk in the park, but these could be the games again where where uh, he starts and and hopefully performs because we need him to perform. You like Chelsea to win the group over? Yeah, Milan? I, yeah, I think, I, so. I think that experience matters, and Tuchel knows what he's doing in these types of competitions. I think AC Milan uh, is yeah. going to have enough of a I struggle agree. within the league to have to really, really uh, like it's balance. All, they're not, they're not, yeah. de- they're not as deep as a Chelsea is. Um, right, right. And and I don't even think Chelsea necessarily knows who their starting eleven is all the time. They probably have nine players that are their starters. So I could, I could still see them having enough rotation or 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 depth to to win the group. And on top of that, this is where Christian could essentially cement his place in the starting 11 for sure, premier league point, matches great point, great point. right so if he rises to to the occasion and delivers with an opportunity in champions league then thomas Tuchel has to has to play him because chelsea have not been really operating as they normally have in, in the attacking third it, it looks like just dysfunctional and if, if you bring in a motivated hungry player like christian pulisic who's been who's been that guy for them whenever he's been challenged and benched he's always fought back so you would assume as long as he he stays healthy and i'd also like to assume that he's learned his body now how, how to prevent these injuries from mm-hmm, happening mm-hmm. outside of getting crunched in the tackle but if he when he plays quick and he takes less is more in terms of touches that's when he's most effective playing one twos combining quickly, not holding onto the ball. Like in right. Conquer cap with the U S he holds onto the ball, gets absolutely crushed. Everyone collapses on him, and he's not, not as effective. He has to figure out different ways to have uh, just a, as much of a presence as, as someone who would take 10 or 20 touches if with one or two or three and, and, and get the job done. So I, I believe he'll, he'll earn his playing time in the premier league through the champions league. Which is crazy because I still don't think, even if he plays well, that Tuchel trusts him. And that that's what pisses me off the most, that he's playing for a coach that doesn't have his back. And that's really hard to overcome. We've all right. We've all done it. We've, We've all, all done, done it. it. We've all done it. We've had <laughs> yeah. to figure out a way to survive, 100%. Charlie, back to you. I know you're taking a, a quick drink. Talk to me. Who's your Champions League winner? Who, who's winning it oh, this year? Oh, damn. I wasn't I'll ready for that. I'm putting you on the that. spot. Hot diggity dog. <laughs> hey, Charlie. <laughs> Hot who's winning the Champions League? I just right throw it out there. Before just we say it, we, Charlie. That's just like, say who's it. winning the World Cup in 2026? <laughs> um, I'm going to go with Real Madrid. Okay. Again? No, come on. They, they yeah. Man City. Man City. I'm going Man City. I'm, I'm, going, Bayern now. Munich. I, I'm going Bayern Munich. I like yeah. I like what they did. I, I think Sadio Mane is solid, dude. He yeah. is. I, I'm going to just go with Real Madrid. They just have so much depth and – with Benzema being no Casemiro Benzema. though, no Casemiro. Casemiro was already booted to the side. That's why they let him go. Well, because they got crazy money for him. Anyway, that was it. So, so you say Real Madrid, PSG, or Man City? What did you say, Heath? He said, I Man said, City. I said Man City. Yeah, uh, Man City. He I just mean, I'm not going to write up. Oh, Holland. Like I, I mean, if you were missing a piece, I hope, I hope that's I, the piece you were missing. I, uh, yeah, to win the to win the Champions League. Uh, otherwise, like. We're all doomed. Then again, look at look at PSG. You would expect that to be the, the case, but yeah. I'm going I to, Bayern I'm, Munich six to one. I might put a little scratch on that. Also, Barcelona. Okay. If they get everybody signed and Xavi can get that defense sorted out and Ter Stegen can make saves, kind of Courtois esque, plus, plus twenty to one. Listen, to, listen, listen, listen I'm to just, Jimmy justify I'm just, it. Yeah, well, he, this guy has he, the year of his life, and that guy has the, the best game of his you, life in the final. Listen, yeah. And then the back line, they don't give up any goals for the whole year. And then like Lewandowski <laughs> scores more goals than he ever did. This team's gonna wrap it up. Listen, listen. Oh, yeah. Look it's at, it up. at the incredible. end of the day, though, did they have a great life experience or not? All right, we're gonna take yeah. our first and only break of in soccer. We trust when we come back. George, we'll talk a little Rick bit more. Pearson. Let's go. Don't go anywhere. Starfleet, get your Starfleet. Prepare for warp 10 excitement. Yeah! This is an unauthorized launch. It is the greatest adventure of your life. Ah! These broken rocks are reading our nightmares, but I don't like my nightmares. Behold! Oh, so magical. Whatever happens, we're in this together. Woo! Ah! 
Welcome back to the Soccer We Trust. I'm Jimmy Trashcan Conrad here with Charlie Chuck Wagon Davies and Hollywood Heath Pierce. And I have to let everybody know that Paramount Plus is the only place to stream every minute of every Serie A match. Uh, you can quickly and easily sign up for your very own account right now with a free one month trial by going to ParamountPlus.com forward slash Italy. Just click the try it free button. Okay, it should be there and big and easy to see. And use promo code Italy for instant access to the best Italian club soccer slash couch of all time. And it's available across all of your devices. Visit <clears> Paramount Plus. <throat> Dot com forward slash Italy and start streaming today. All right, guys. Well, we talked about the Champions League recap. And uh, I see here in a little rundown that maybe we want to discuss my time at Leeds and me going to training. And I want to give a shout out to Jesse Marsh. Not only because now I, he's like, you could never criticize him anymore because he got you tickets to the he's game. Well, no, room. for now, he's, Jimmy. He's in the room. But yeah, he's, he's, uh, <laughs> he's he, sitting he, behind the computer. For the, fir- <laughs> for the first couple of months, Jimmy, he's going to get the free pass from you. But I'm just yeah. curious to see no, what, listen, spring, listen, what, it, what you're willing it's, to say. It's, less, you got, it's uh, less about the tickets. That yeah. That is not what's going to endear him to me. It's the fact that I said, hey, is it cool if I come to training? He was open to it. And not only did I just get to like sit on the sideline and watch, he brought me into the video meeting, so I got to sit there and watch the whole breakdown of how they cover Barnsley and what they wanted to do. Uh, I got to speak to Brendan and Tyler, Jack Harrison, the guys that I knew, and that was very cool. They're welcome to come on the pod anytime. I think Jesse will come on as well at some point, which is very cool. So so that part of it was – was I was thrilled with that, just to be around, to get the nuts yeah. and bolts, to see how he's talking to his team, how he's talking to his staff, what they're trying to accomplish. And then I had the benefit of going to the game to see how they were executing on these ideas. And it's really cool to see just how he's communicating and how, it's, for me, how that how that information is being absorbed by his players. Did it feel? Did it feel? Uh, did it feel like a British locker room? Did it feel like an American locker room? Like, uh, you well, know, it's definitely. I, a, I guess a trying British... to like. I, I'm trying to c- contextualize like what's the energy that he he's owning in there? Does it feel like you're in an MLS locker? No, I, I don't know what to, what to ask saying. this, but like, it, does it feel different? It, it felt it, foreign. It, did it feel foreign? Yeah. No, no, no. I think, I think when I, because I had asked a couple people uh, at the club, you know, how's Jesse doing? How's it going? What's the vibe like? And, and from what I understand, I'm getting more insight on Marcelo Bielsa. He was a bit heavy handed, a, a bit of a control freak, wanted to, you know, all that stuff. Not that Jesse isn't on top of his things in the same type of way, but it's how he approaches it. And I think they were ready to be done with Bielsa and that, that, like really lack of relationship with the coach. Mm-hmm. He kind of stood off to the side. It was hard to like get to know him. Whereas Jesse's very open and, and, and wants to get to know you and wants to, to not only help you become a better player, but also a better human being. And like, there's all these elements that come into it. And, and so I, I'm, I might be like tiptoeing into Ted Lasso stuff. And, hey, and, Jimmy, hey, hold, on, hold on, Charlie, real quick. Do you, do, doesn't it feel like a little bit like Jimmy feels threatened by your, your hosting where he's, he's starting to go on these experiences and then wants to be interviewed on these experiences. <laughs> yeah. You know, like he want, why does our host want to be interviewed on the things that he's doing? Yeah. You know what I mean? Why does no, guys, you guys I, want to talk about my experience there. Right? Yeah. It's in the rundown. I just want to tell you guys what I did. Keep so going. go ahead. Keep- ask away guys. Ask away. Charlie, you're, you're on the driver's seat to, to host this thing, man. Jimmy, you know, no, He's not on the driver's seat. He's on the toilet seat. Okay. We've already gone (laughs) over this. He's like, so anyway, anyway, trash can I have like, uh, I picked the, I picked the, no, I picked the perfect time to go because they had just beaten Chelsea and, and uh, obviously, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, no, it was just, it was a really neat experience. And and, I uh, I, I hope that that you guys, if you come over here, he'll, he'll do the, he'd do the same for you guys. I mean, it's going to be real hurtful if if Charlie and I try (laughs) and and, and we don't get the same treatment. He's like, I, yeah, 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 Jimmy already used it up. Uh, (laughs) But let me, let me ask you this guys, because we're on, we are on the topic of, uh, of Champions League, right? And we had Brendan Aronson and Tyler Adams both came from Champions League clubs to go to a club that survived on the last day. Now, unbelievable start, but are we all in the same boat that 38 games in the champions uh, in the Premier League is better than their previous situations? Or do we think that, you know, uh, Leipzig, I mean, they're different, Leipzig yeah. and, and, and Salzburg, but like coming from these places where they got to play Champions League and they got to play knockout rounds, which are hugely crucial in the development. But every game is going to be a Champions League game for Leeds in the Premier League. Well, you, you'll hear every player who comes from Champions League clubs, the biggest clubs that come to the Premier League, it's the expectation from week to week, the competition from week to week that from top to bottom is better than the scenarios that they were in before. Yes. You throw in Leeds United, not in champions league, but they're, they're playing Chelsea. They're playing United. They're playing Liverpool. They're playing Tottenham. They're playing Arsenal. They're playing the top teams and players in the world. That that's what you crave 
as as a player. You want to be in the best league, in the best competition. That's the English Premier League. And I don't think anyone's really going to doubt that. That's the, it's the best league in the world, and with the most intensity. And I think for for our national team, especially right now, we want to play with that intensity. We want to play on that high press game. It's all about the situation you're in as a as a, at a club. You're they're both coming to Leeds United in the Premier League with an American manager. Mm-hmm. That there's no for Tyler Adams. You already had a relationship with 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 uh, Jesse. You already played for him. So there's not a better scenario ever for a player to be in the top league with a with a team in the Premier League with a manager you play for. And for Brandon Aronson, the same thing. Yeah, Leeds was interested in in him before Jesse Marsh, but coming, you know you're going to have a little bit more of a connection to the manager. There's a little bit more of a belief. And with Jesse Marsh helping Bern Aronson grow and putting him in positions to succeed. And also you probably, your, your rope is a little bit longer with Jesse Marsh as opposed to um, uh, on any other manager. So I think for those two in particular, it's a, it's a dream scenario. Yeah, I agree with you. And I think that they understand that and they're trying to make the most of it. I, I think mm-hmm. there is something when I spoke to both of the players very briefly, there was an, an, an energy or there was a mention of the fact that they want to earn this on their own, not just because they were once coached by Jesse Marsh. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a point of pride for them to go out there and kind of stand on their own two feet, knowing that they were going to probably get this opportunity to your point, Charlie, because of Jesse, but now they had to go out there and prove it. And if they mm-hmm. didn't, that would be, it'd be a little bit of a sticky situation if they didn't live up to their billing. So there's, yeah, there's plenty right. of time. They got Brighton this weekend away. And that's going to be a tough game because Brighton also has gotten off to a good start with two wins and a draw just as Leeds has. But the buzz around the city was tremendous. I I will say at the League Cup game against Barnsley, they had 35,000 people for a a midweek game and everybody was just loving the team and obviously having a 3-1 win to back that up. Yeah, even Jesse came in afterwards and and where we were hanging out after the game and he just was like, I can't believe there were that many people there because I think they were expecting maybe half of that because the League Cup that early on. So everybody's feeling really good about it, and, and so, long may that continue. So when did the Ted Lasso connection come into play? For me? Oh, yeah. I've I, I become friends with Coach Beard, uh, the actor Brendan Hunt that plays Coach Beard last year okay. uh, at some point. And, uh, you know, as we do, we, we want to introduce ourselves. Yeah, he used to play a little bit or whatever. He's like, no, I was at your game. He went to the 2006 World Cup. That guy's a diehard fan. So I'm really looking forward to hanging out with him uh, tomorrow in particular. And, and you're going to get – at least you have to throw him like, hey, you he got to come on the pod. For oh, I think, he, I think he will 100%. They're, 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 I don't know where they are in their filming in terms of yeah. what part of the season. or the Last season, the right? Final season. It's, it's the last season, yeah. So I'll try to see if I can get some uh, some Ted Lasso, some gear or some they, kind of – How can they make it the last season if it's such a hit? I know, yeah. I know. I don't know. Go out Maybe on top. They, I don't, yeah, go out on top. It's like goal three, nice you know? But but if I can do something live from the Ted Lasso set tomorrow, I'll definitely make it happen. If not, you're stuck with these two guys, Charlie and Heath. Uh, All right, we're going to call yeah. it a show. In Soccer We Trust is done for today. We appreciate your love and support as always. So on behalf of producer Des, producer Alex, Charlie Chuck Wacken Davies, and Hollywood Heath Pierce, I'm Jimmy Trashcan Conrad saying thank you for listening as and watching, of course, as always. And we'll see you tomorrow. Later. Later.